right? He's a writer, producer, director, Golden Girls, Roseanne. I mean, this guy's been involved in like a bunch of stuff. And now he is someone who brought a stage play that many of us are familiar with to the stage with a cast that brings another interesting element to it. I'll talk to him about that and more. Stan Zimmerman, everybody. Come on, put it together for Stan. Hello. What about, Hello. My, what about my Stan fans? Forget those oh, other guy names, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Stan can really run with the Kyles and the Ivans in terms really? of, yeah, well, maybe for quality, okay. but not in, in quantity. That's all this, I'm, I'm this saying. This, what you know, is all IA. It's not really me. <laughs> I'm listening to you guys. I... <laughs> I will tell you, uh, Stan, that you have that great energy and uh, funny that uh, I, you know, like when I'm around you, I totally see, oh, I see why this guy could so hit the ball in a writer's room and, you know, make stuff happen. But uh, I, I want to, can I put the Golden Girls uh, stuff aside for a second? Because I do want to mention, I'll mention it at the beginning here and I'll mention it at the end. We do have Southern California viewers uh, and listeners, and I'd love for them to at least know about and try to get to see this production of The Diary of Anne Frank. Now, The Diary of Anne Frank is a story we know, and maybe or maybe not people have seen it on stage, but I think that could be, it could go either way. But certainly the way you've presented it is something innovative and new, at least I'd never heard of it. Tell me about this event and this particular production of The Diary of Anne Frank. Uh, it started in 2018 and I woke up in a godly early hour and turned on CNN and I saw a news report about a Jewish woman in LA who was hiding a Latina mom and her two daughters when this mother's husband was deported by ICE. And I kind of jolted out of bed and I thought, we're literally living in the times of Anne Frank. And then a light bulb went off and I thought, wait, what if I stage the play do not change a word of it but i cast everyone in the attic with latinx actors um and i either thought i was crazy or i was onto something but i think i was onto something it triggered a lot of uh right-wing hate from drudge and breitbart um we got a lot of death threats the original theater had to take down their marquee and luckily brooke baldwin at she was at cnn at the time had me on her show and um i got to talk about it we sold out we've been doing it Theaters in Hollywood, where you saw it, uh, Beverly Hills, a, a theater festival in Vancouver. And then this past January, the beautiful Colony Theater in Burbank invited us there and we sold out all shows and we're coming back this coming weekend. And we're having a 92 year old Holocaust survivor for our talkbacks every day. And you just put up, um, we have some wonderful uh, moderators, which I'll have to drag you into next time, Mark. Yeah, um, yeah I will never to... forget you after when you saw the play in Hollywood. <laughs> Do you remember your response? I don't. What, what did I say? You I know said, I, I, I can't talk to you. It was so intense, and you like ran to your car. It's true. Um, I, I, I think I, I was really. I, I'm sort of a. I don't know. Empathic, whatever. It kind of gets me into trouble sometimes because I feel like, oh, but wow, I thought that was a riveting production. I remember. I mean, I really, I, I thought I just said, wow, that's riveting. I didn't realize that I said, <laughs> you know, I can't really speak right now. It was really powerful, man. And Thank you. look, the story is powerful. Uh, and the connection to where we are as a culture, I think, is fascinating. You're so right. It, um, there was all, there were all these uh, all these scenes of of kids being wrenched out of the arms of their parents. Remember in, in yeah. the uh, Hispanic community, Latino community. Yes, and unfortunately, it's gotten even more timely with the rise in anti-Semitism since we started it in 2018, and uh, just the hate that's out there. And to be quite honest, I don't know if we could do this play in a state like Florida, because um, in the play, even though they're the exact words that Anne Frank wrote. It's just too much. It would probably be banned. But luckily, we're here in Southern California. I hope people can come see it. The talkbacks are so beautifully emotional and such an important part of the piece. And we have Jay Rodriguez from Queer Eye, who's going to be one of the moderators and the mayor of Burbank. Mm -hmm. and, and we're just very excited about that. Hey, Tony, can you put up a banner just with the uh, how to get in touch also? Five shows only, April 28th to May 1st. Yeah. Tickets at brownpapertickets.com. I uh, would like to continue to keep doing this. Um, luckily, schools have been very responsive, and we have, we're have we doing two morning matinees this Friday and May 1st on Monday. And to see kids, most of these kids, first of all, it's their first play they've seen. 
And I didn't know this until we started casting the play, but this Anne Frank's diary is no longer required reading for kids. So most kids that come to this play don't know her story and don't know the ending. And um, it's it's just such a, a great way to start discussion with these kids about what happened during the Holocaust. You know, I grew up, I'm Jewish, and so I grew up learning a lot about it, but doing this play, I've learned so much more. It's a, um, it's so powerful and you, the dynamics of a family, you know, it's all there in, uh, in, in the, in the play. And I think seeing it in an intimate environment like this, a colony theater is really nice, but, uh, the colony nice... is a little bit bigger than the one we're in. And as you were mentioning, you know, my background is in comedy and I found inherently in the script, there was a lot of comedy when mm. Mrs. Van Don flirts with Mr. Frank. That's all in the script. I didn't make that up, but most productions are done so heavy, but you can't get that many people together in one room and not find <laughs> humor in it. Uh, and, yeah. and, you know, also the fighting. So these uh, productions, these five shows will be at the Colony Theater. Mm -hmm. And then there's a run plan beyond that or not? This is, this is our, hoping, our last chance. Uh, we're, we are hoping to, to bring it back in the fall. Uh, I will have to tell you about that later, but there is a, we were asked to be a, in a big festival in South Central in September. And oh, cool. the show just keeps going and going, and we've created this wonderful family, and we have different actors coming in and out of it. Most of the cast is the cast that you saw, the original um, Otto Frank and Anne Frank, uh, Genesis of Cho, uh, started 15 years old with us, and now she's at Pepperdine, so we're very proud of her. So cool. Wow. All right, so uh, uh, to our Southern California friends, it's there in Burbank, and check it out, uh, brownpapertickers.com. Uh, Stan, I can't let you leave without... Uh, Answering a question, didn't uh -oh. you do some kind of tour or live Q&A about Golden Girls? Yeah, I was doing uh, On the Lanai out in Palm <laughs> Springs, and we sold out like three different shows, but I just came back from the Golden Con. Thank you for being a fan in Chicago uh, last month, and then I went right to the uh, Golden Fans at Sea, which is the Golden Girls cruise out of Miami, and uh, I just love meeting the fans. I love for a writer... Uh, we don't normally get to, you know, talk to people that watch our show. And especially with the show like Golden Girls, it meant so much to them. And so many people have wonderful stories that they watched it with their grandmother. And hopefully the book I'm writing will be out at the end of the year. It's called The Girls from Golden to Gilmore. And it's about- Oh, that's great. Yeah, because Stan was on Gilmore Girls also. That's right. Yeah. So it's about all the wonderful women I've worked with and Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> And That's yes, funny. the tea will be spilled. Uh, stories uh, about when she went to get electric shock. Um, the, the, <laughs> the number t-shirt. I still have my number thirteen t-shirt. So I'll have to come back on and. Uh, oh my god! I survived. So uh, my thirteen-year-old daughter recently found Gilmore Girls, and we are watching it together. And I think we're on season three now, but we watch like a couple episodes, a couple every other night. It's a really good show. I'm really, really enjoying good. it. I didn't, I missed it the first time around. So now to watch it with my daughter is kind of fun. Well, wait to get to season five, mine, the best, of course. Um, <laughs> but you two need to come. There's an annual festival back east when the leads are changing, and we get so many wonderful mothers and daughters that come and share an experience with cast members and crew members and writers. And oh, is there a Gilmore Girls con as well? Yes, it's, it's, okay. called, it's called the Fan Fest Society. And we've become this little family where actually there are Zimmer fans and a group of women follow me around to different events I do in the country. They just came to a world premiere of a play in mine in Dallas. And we've become, wow. it's, it's like family. It's, it's like the show. It's, uh, it's just this unique group of, of individuals that love that that show, and, and now we're in each other's lives forever. That's really wild. That's really, cool. That's really wild. And look at that, that you've brought this family together, Kim and her daughter, and they enjoy yeah. your work. Yeah, it's well, pretty we've cool. We've been enjoying it. It's a, it's a great show, and it's you know created by Amy Sherman Palladino, who does Mrs. Maisel. Uh, so she has a history of great writing. We met, yeah. on, we met on Roseanne. And we suffered through that together. She she would pile us in her car. Me and my writing partner said, we're going off a lot. We're going to get some wine. And we're going to write some great Darlene Roseanne. Yeah. And we did. The Golden Girls crew, those actors were so, they seemed talented and like comfortable in their own skin. This is from the outside mm -hmm. looking in. Like you wouldn't have a lot of like the massive insecurities that sometimes inform a performer who's getting out of control on a show 
as it gets more popular. Am I right about that from the outside looking um, in? Or? Well, Betty B and Rue were all on shows for a long time, so they were very secure, and they were the best of the best. I always say, like, if they could make a joke work, we just had to come up with something else. But Estelle um, had stage fright. And um, when tape night came, she was petrified of the lines. And then we didn't know then, but at the time she was starting to experience early onset dementia. So if you'll notice some scenes when she's eating raisins, it's because they wrote the lines on her hand. I don't oh, mean to ruin the show for everybody. No, that's no. great. This is the kind of thing that actually makes it more fun to watch it. You know, Estelle is my girl and we got to be friends outside the show. And so she will always hold a very close place in my heart. And I, I think of her constantly and I, I wish she was around to guide me on the phone, but now it's just up there. Yeah, yeah. How the Golden Girls? How old were they? They were not super old, though, were they? they no, you, that's guys, you guys really played up their age, but it was. Yeah. Well, it, age was different then. It's funny. I've seen a lot of memes where they have pictures of, of Rue McClanahan as Blanche and J Lo, and they were the, they're the same age <laughs> as in the pilot. And you're like, wait a minute, like. Is it the hair, that poopy hair that they did? You know, can you imagine J-Lo like in a Betty White mullet? Um, <laughs> age is just, is, is, is different nowadays. So you're, I see. So you're saying it was not, so it's just the way we looked at it. It's different. I yeah. think. I, mean, yeah, I, I think had right. forgotten how, how amazingly funny that show is. I remember it came on and I have, I have kids, you know, as I mentioned, and I thought, oh, Golden Girls, that, no problem with that. And then you hear that it's like, it's almost dirty, but not. These innuendos that are like, oh God, I can't, my kid, I got to get the kids out of out of in front of that. And that's, you know, no. So it's, but God, such funny jokes. So we wrote funny. a joke when uh, Blanche was propositioned by her teacher. So we were doing sexual harassment like way. And mm -hmm. uh, at the end, she says, "You can kiss my A," and she gives them her test. And I thought the censors are going to come in; they're going to stop it, right? It's on the show, and I think we got away with a lot A because it was a, a massive hit. But also, I think they thought, oh, these cute ladies, like no one's going to take offense to what they said. So they got away with a lot more. But we were mm -hmm. very lucky. And I, I just adore the show and what we were able to, to say on yeah. the show. Well, it's great that it's had this enduring. Again, you've been on shows that have had enduring uh, uh, qualities. Here's the uh, Diary of Anne Frank, though, is the latest. Uh, it's a Latinx cast. And again, it's been very successful. You can get uh, brownpapertickets.com for more information uh there's a link there although i don't think that link's live we'll, we'll link it we'll link it in uh tony will you yeah, link it in that, our, that, that yeah. link in the chat works actually so if you click on oh, it in okay. chat it'll work but i'll actually in the description after the show today i'll have it there too cool but so thank we'll you so much for being supportive of local la theater it's really hard for this community to actually be taken seriously when local media does not support it the way you do by not only showing up at the plays but having me on your show multiple times you had me when we did Yes, Virginia with your old friend, Arnisha Walker. And Mindy she was Sterling. great. And that was a great show, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you. I'm a guy. It's my, it's my pleasure to support. You know, I love theater. I'm a guy. I'm a guy, but I loved Gilmore Girls, especially the romance between Lorelai and the cook and the parents characters. Good job. Look, says Robert. look at Lorelai. There's some stories there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tease you with that. Yes. All right. Until your next, uh, until your next visit, Stan. Uh, you're just uh, so cool. As I say, you have that special thing that I, I just think you're you're gifted with. Again, info the Colony Theater for our Southern California viewers. It is in Burbank, and it, five shows only to catch this April 28th through May 1st. And Stan will be there. Say hi to him. Brown I mean, paper I tickets. Dot com. Yeah, definitely stop and say hi to Stan. All right, Stan, thank you. Stan Zimmerman, everybody. Hi. hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.